Okay, hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd just like to welcome everyone to um, today's morning session. Um, the session topic is water treatment. My name is David Jones, and um, I'll kick off today's talks um, about electrocoagulation before handing over to Julian Edwards from ABB, who's going to talk about um, coagulation control processes. Okay, so um, just a brief intro then. My name is David Jones. I'm from a company called Modern Water. Um, we're based um, primarily in North Wales, but also Guildford. I'm going to talk to you today about our AgriCure electrocoagulation treatment technology, um, primarily methods and the benefits that we have. Okay, so as a little overview to today's talk, um, we're going to initially, I'm just going to go over a few basic principles about uh, electrochemistry because that's what our technology is based in. Then we're going to have a, a little overview of electrocoagulation in general before moving on to our AgriCure technology. And then we'll talk a bit about performance and results and then I'll finish with some closing remarks. Okay, so very simply then, electrochemistry, you can break it down into two, two things. In the chemical reaction, you have reagent one plus reagent two, which gives you a product. In electrochemistry, however, you have a reagent one and you utilize an electron as a secondary reagent and that's how you form a product. So in essence, the electrons you use as a reagent and you can control the rate of this reaction through electrical current. That's just a bit of basics for everyone. Okay, so let's move on now to coagulation. Now, uh, traditionally, chemical coagulation has been done and it normally involves dosing water with ferric chloride. This, this ferric chloride normally comes in 40% uh, concentration mix. And the premise behind it is if you have um, a water tank and if you see those large uh, spheres there, they're, they're representing colloids, so a contaminant in the water. If you dose in ferric chloride, what normally happens is the ferric chloride coalesces with the, um, with, the uh, with the contaminant and everything drops down and forms a thick sludge at the bottom of the water tank. And from that, you can then siphon off the clean water and that's, that's how the system works for uh, chemical coagulation. <clears throat> now, electrocoagulation is a little bit different. And the main difference is the way we, um, way we supply or provide flock into solution. So whereas chemical dosing, you, you use ferric chloride to provide your flock. Here, we use metal plates and we actively corrode the metal plates to form our flocculum. The type of metal plates we use can differ depending on the type of flock you want to impart. For instance, um, mild steel. We, we use mild steel to impart iron flock, which is similar to iron chloride. If you're using alum or aluminum sulfate, we could use aluminum plates. For the basis of today, we'll just run through uh, with metal plates. So if we take things a step back, uh, take things a back a bit a step now, and we look at the lab scale system, we have an EC reactor. And in, in that EC reactor, we have a water tank, and we have our mild steel anode, and we have uh, an inert cathode. And these two complement each other. And when we connect them to a power supply, we connect the, the anode to the positive, and the, the cathode to the negative. And why do we do that? Well, because we want to rust the anode, we want to oxidize it, and we want to draw off ions from its solid state into the ionic state. So if we flip the switch on the power supply, we have electrical current. Electrons are again drawn from the mild steel and deposited into the cathode. What's the result of that? Well, the result is that is then we start to oxidize and corrode the mild steel electrode from solid ion into iron 2 plus, which eventually transforms into Fe3 plus uh, ferric. Now, <clears throat> because we're providing electrons to the cathode, there has to be another uh, reaction occurring. And this reaction is hydrolysis of water molecules. This is where we break up the water molecules into hydroxide and hydrogen. The hydrogen gas is just uh, given off, and it's the hydroxide that we're quite interested in. Because they are both positive and negative in charge, they come together and they form our flocculant, our FeOH3, ferric hydroxide. So overall, the basis of um, an electrocoagulation reactor, rea uh, reactor is to form FeOH3, which ours, it's our uh, coagulant. Okay, so that's lab scale. This is more industrial size now. And very simply, it's electrodes in a water tank connected to a power supply. Flip the power supply on, you have electron transfer and you start to get your corrosion of metals into solution and your formation of iron flock. 
Okay, so that's electrocoagulation. Now we're going to talk a bit about our technology, the AgriCure technology. There's a rather uh, rudimentary photo of our system currently on site in Texas treating marine effluent. Um, what it is, it's a, it's a closed polypropylene EC reactor cell. So basically, the grey box you see is polypropylene, and we use that because we want it to be inert and unreactive. We're, the only reactions we want to occur is on the metal electrodes inside. Okay, now these electrodes are housed inside the, um, inside the cell in a monopolar configuration. Again, you can either have steel if you're trying to dose in iron, or you can have aluminium if you're trying to dose in al aluminium hydroxide. Now the way we have these uh, packs configured and housed in the EC cell allows us to have very low power consumption and upwards of around about 95% electrode wear. It's very homogeneous and basically we can dissolve nearly up to 95% of the electrodes into solution. Now a lot of problems that are common to uh, traditional electrocoagulation systems is that they, they can't very well control when their corrosion occurs during downtime. For our systems, we have a novel inbuilt corrosion prevention system which allows us to cut off and totally stop corrosion when we don't want it to happen. The benefits of this is that we don't lose any of our flux source, any of our anodes, when it's just in downtime. Downtime means when the electrodes are not being in use but they do sit in water. One more other little point to make then is basically it's very easy for these systems to be exchanged and changed from one to another. And all it does is the lid there just pops off and you take out your electrode pack and you drop in another one, close the top and start the system again. This is the biggest system that we um, uh, built. Uh, this is for Southern Water. And whereas before we had to retrofit an electrode system onto a, a current system, this one we managed to play around with it and have a bit of fun. So we have an EC chamber on the right hand side there. There's a buffer tank between the raw water tank we were drawing off and to, the, to our system. And on the left hand side is our control panel where we control the rate of reaction and have our, all our corrosion prevention systems in place. Okay, so what's so important about agricultural technology? Well, there's two things to be aware of. There's uh, a relationship between nucleation rate and growth rate. And these two play a very important part because when you're forming flock, you want to have a very high nucleation rate. And that nucleation rate means you then form a solution which has a high concentration of flock in it. These flocks are quite small at the moment, they're adolescent, so they still need to mature. But we ignore the growth rate part of the relationship and focus on nucleation rate. So we're generating lots and lots of sites that can actively form into flock. That's the first part of the system. The second part of the system, the downstream process, is now where we start to switch the relationship and we then promote growth rate. And the growth rate is very important because we want as large a flock size as possible to have as large surface area to attract the contaminants that are in the water. And what we form uh, ultimately is macro-sized coagulant flocks. There's a picture of a um, flock in solution that we normally produce. Okay, let's have a look at some uh, results now. Uh, just a bit of background. Um, this trial or this project looked at suspended solids removal in marine effluent. We had a raw starting concentration of 1,000 ppm and our target was to hit uh, 70 ppm residual. So first off we always, ran, um, we always run chemical dosing trials and we did this at, at an unregulated pH. Uh, the dashed line indicates 70 ppm which is our target. And as you can see we dosed anywhere from 0 to 200 ppm of uh, ferric chloride and we we didn't get near target. If we then start to tweak pH to get optimum pH of 7, we see we begin to approach target, but not quite. When we run conventional EC, we do eventually hit target, but only at a very high coagulant dose of 400 ppm. Now, when we run the wastewater through our AgriCure EC system, we see that we hit target at 50 ppm and eventually the results get better as the coagulant dose increases. What does that mean in terms of um, power and energy consumption? Well, that last graph there shows a relationship on the left-hand side of um, residual TSS, along the bottom coagulant dose, and on the right axis, power consumption. And as you can see, 
there's always a trade-off and a balance between imparting enough pregnant dose to achieve target but trying to reduce power consumption. So as you can see at 50 ppm, no, no, sorry, at 10 ppm power consumption is low, whereas as we increase to above 25 ppm our power consumption becomes high but we have less residual TSS. Our second case study um, is phosphorus removal in uh, municipal wastewater and the target there was we needed to remove 95, uh, 90% of phosphorus removal. And these results are important because they're, they're a direct light for light comparison. Um, so for instance all the coagulant doses were the same whether they were from ferric chloride, from conventional or agricure EC. Okay, so at chemical dosing optimum pH we achieved our target of 90% uh, 90 P removal. If we run it through conventional EC, we notice that we have a drop in performance and we only ma maximize P removal at 76%. Now, if we run it through AgriCure EC, we notice that we surpass both those other treatment methods and we hit 97%. The other value in red there shows that for AgriCure EC, we even dropped power consumption by a half. Okay, finally, just to summarize uh, uh, this talk, the way AgriCure system works is that we have full 100% control of the flock forming environment. This means that initially we promote and push nucleation rate over growth rate, and then afterwards, during the downstream processes, we push for growth rate, and this allows us to achieve larger, stronger sized flocks that are resilient to shear um, and, and, and turbulent regimes. Because of the way AgriCure is set up, we have significantly reduced coagulant doses required which means we don't have to impart as much coagulant dose as conventionally see or indeed chemical dosing. Uh, the side, side point to make is that we also have lower residual coagulant left in suspension, uh, left in, in treated solutions as opposed to conventional. Because of the, in, uh, the inbuilt um, cathodic protection systems we have in all our chambers, we also avoid um, passivation issues that normally blight conventional EC. Passivation issues such as uh, rusting when, when you don't want the electrodes to rust. If you compare the cell I showed you in the first slide, um, it housed an electrode pack which weighs about 15 kilograms and is 26 centimeters by 5.5. If you compare that to maybe a tank of 2,000 liters ferric chloride, the footprint sizes are completely different so we can retrofit into smaller systems where space might be an issue. Finally, the way our uh, downstream processes are optimized, we have an expanded range of treatment and we can indeed treat uh, wastewater which normally have been a problem for conventional EC, such as oils and fat suspensions. Okay, thanks for listening. Uh, I'm going